When the Prophet والسلام, moved to Medina, he noticed that the people were pollinating date palms. They were manipulating the date palms. And he asked them, he said, why do you do that? They say we get a better crop. And so he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, maybe it's better you don't do it. So they stopped doing it. He didn't tell them to stop doing it. But you know, a suggestion from the Messenger of Allah is like a commandment to us. So that when they did that, they had less crops. And they came to the Prophet والسلام, and said, see Rasulullah, this is what we're talking about. And the Prophet said something, every president, every prime minister, every king, every dictator, every governor, every mayor, head of police should have heard what the Prophet says. He says, Whenever I order you to do something of a religion, you do it. Five prayers a day, you do it. Making pilgrimage, you do it. Whatever I order you to do, do it. Of the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when I tell you to do something of my own opinion, I'm only a human being. Who are you? You the president of the United States of America? Who are you? I'm not going to obey you because you're simply the president or you the governor or you the mayor. You know how many Muslims in Russia? About 25 million Muslims in Russia. If Putin said go over there and kill those people, what are you going to do? So, I'm going to make one point. Aisha radiallahu anha she narrated 2,000 something hadith, Abu Huraira, maybe something 5,000 something. But the difference when Abu Huraira comes to the gate of the Prophet, he don't go in. Aisha goes in. So she can see, see things that we don't see. Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And the Messenger of Allah remembers Allah in every circumstance she sees. One day the Prophet prayed so much that his feet began to swell. Say, Ya Rasulullah, why you do that? When Allah has already given you, you know, the great uh, gift, he said, should I not be a thankful servant? I'm going to finish with this, a question that Aisha radiallahu anha asked her husband, the Messenger of Allah. And to me, it's very telling. Everything he says should be a lesson for us. Everything. She said, Ya Rasulullah, has there been a day more difficult than Uhud? Now, I want you to remember what happened in Uhud. Muslims had a decisive edge. We're going to win the battle. When I was in the nation of Islam, the brothers had what you call uh, general orders. And general order number five, quit your post only when properly relieved. And the Muslims who fought at Uhud, they left their post because they thought they were going to win. As a result, it was a devastating loss. 85 Muslims lost their lives, including Hamza, the uncle of the Prophet Wasallam. Now, that's devastating. But he said yes. What was more devastating? When he went to Taif. Alhamdulillah, I visited Taif in 1978. At that time, the Prophet went to do what? To give dawah. And they threw stones at him. They chased him away. He was bleeding and he was going away, dejected. And I want you to imagine the Prophet والسلام, walking in the sun and all of a sudden there's a shade. And he looks up. Behold, the angel Jibril. And the angel Jibril told him that Allah has sent down the angel of the mountains for you to order them. Now the prophet can get his revenge. What they did to him, he's bleeding, he's dejected. He's trying to bring them to Islam and they throw stones at him. At that moment, then the angel of the mountains, he appears and gives him salams and says, Allah has ordered me, tell me that you order me whatever you want to do. And the prophet said this, I hope that Allah would raise from their loins those who will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it happened. Why am I saying that? As bad as Muslims are treated around the world, 
we still want to bring those people to Islam. Have you ever thought about the Battle of Badr? Have you ever thought about the people who fought, I'm sorry, the Battle of Uhud and the people that fought against the Prophet in the Battle of Uhud? Abu Sufyan ibn Harb, he becomes Muslim. Ikrama ibn Abi Jahli, command of the left flank, he becomes Muslim. Um, um, right flank, Khalid ibn Walid, he becomes Muslim. Amr ibn al-As, command of the cavalry, he becomes Muslim. You see, you never know. So my, my recommendation, everybody know me, know what I'm pushing the Muslims for. Begging the Muslims to go out there and invite the people to Islam. There are so many people out there waiting. They may be bad people now. Yes, they may be bad people. But our obligation is to spread the message and call the people to Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, bless this message. Jazakallah al khayla. as alaykum wa rahmatullah. يا عباد يا عبادي الذين آمنوا إن أرضي واسعة فإياي فاعبدون كل نفس ذائقة الموت كل نفس ذائقة الموت ثم إلينا ترجع عمل الصالحات لنبوئنهم من الجنة غرفا من الجنة غرفا تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها خالدين فيها نعم أجر العاملين